Welcome to the Spa Girls podcast, the self-publishing podcast for authors. You're in the right place for the best writing, marketing and publishing advice, plus interviews with industry experts and best-selling authors. I'm Cheryl Phipps. I'm Shah Barrett. And I'm Trudy J. Welcome to the Spa. And this welcome, week everyone. we have Lana Love. Hello. Woo-hoo! Hey, welcome. <laughs> Lana is the author of uh, Short Romance, and I'm going to give you the um, bio quickly, and then we're going to dig right in to uh, getting all that knowledge all out things. of your brain and into <laughs> our readers' ears. So, and I'm saying it's, see, it's our accent, Lana, 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 Lana. Lana. Okay. Lana. yeah, we're, we're going to mess that up, I'm sorry. <laughs> so- <laughs> um, Lena Love is the USA Today best-selling author of short romance featuring curvy heroines and the strong men who move heaven and earth to capture the heart of the woman they can't live without. Lana lives in the Pacific Northwest and is passionate about dancing, travel, chocolate, cocktails, and writing stories that make her heart race and bring her fantasies to life. Oh, that sounds awesome. I like all of that. It does. It does. <laughs> so Lena how can you just um give us an introduction to you how did you get into writing and and self-publishing in particular well I wrote my first book when I was in third grade um (laughs) and I illustrated it it was about three pages long (laughs) and then about um and then I was always writing and then I went to college and I have a degree in creative writing and then I ended up working in high tech but I did some business writing and then I started doing NaNoWriMo and then a friend and I, we were like, wow, we just wrote these stories that both sort of became erotica. And then we vowed to publish an anthology of our writing, which mm-hmm. ended up with us be- creating a publishing house for literary erotica. And we mm-hmm. published two anthologies um, and then we disbanded. And then I started writing erotica and self-publishing that and then I wrote a couple of novels and then went back to erotica and then eventually I landed on Lena Love and here I am 65 60 some books later yeah that's 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 so cool and it's been I think about eight years eight years yeah so you've been writing Lena Love did you um what what was it about so you it's been uh, the short story uh or short romance for eight years have you been writing shorts or were they longer previously or well I originally started with writing erotica um I I think I wrote my first Lena book I want to say in maybe 2017 um and I think I did four or five books then and then I took some time off from from Lena and then I relaunched Lena Love in 2019 um and I was very excuse me I was very strategic about that. It's like, I knew that I wanted to write short romance. I knew that I wanted to write curvy heroines. And so I spent a couple months, you know, researching what people were doing in the short romance world. Mm-hmm. I built a strategy and then came Excuse. back at the end of 2019. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so that's in less than five years, that's 60 books, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I am not a fast writer. I'm unfortunately like, I originally thought that maybe I could be a book a week author, um, like other authors were, but I think the most I ever achieved was three books in one month, and it was it was hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was gonna so say, I, have, I can't even imagine it. Even even with that shorter range, because you still have to write the book and then produce, go it, through like, it, and yeah. do do edits, and yeah, it's not just well, all done and one and done. Also, launching a book a week because it's for yeah. me, like especially at the beginning. It like took a day to launch the book because I, I would at the beginning I was doing my own proofreading and then you've got to do your formatting mm-hmm. and then you've got to do your ERC and then like uploading and like it would take me a full day to do all that and I was just like mm-hmm. I can't do that every week mm-hmm. um, and so mm-hmm. and I mean that was part of my eventual strategy is to find a way to make Lana sustainable without doing that speed racing for yeah. mm-hmm. or like publishing like a book a week because mm-hmm. I I I can't do that I would like to be able to do that what are you doing now yeah you know I do a book a month a book a month yeah a book a month and how Uh, um how long are they they are generally about 15,000 words now and they get up to about 17,000 with the epilogue okay that's cool Mm -hmm. so are you what's your production schedule like like so are you writing them in in advance and how long does it take you to write could you 
Um, so I, I write in series and it's a, like, I'm, I've just finished a series, um, last month and I have a collaboration book that's coming out in a few weeks and then I'm starting a new series. And so what I do is I brainstorm the series, like for the series that's coming up, I'm like, okay, I know I want this book to be a second chance romance, this one to be this kind of romance. And then I just start thinking about them because I actually spend a lot of time thinking about them and saying, okay, I, now I need to build a plot around that. Or if I have like what you would call a set piece scene, um, then I'm like, how do I get to that scene? Mm -hmm. um, and like this current book that I'm working on for a collaboration, like I knew what I wanted the meet cute to be because I'm basing it on my parents' meet cute, <laughs> which is the very short version was, is when my mother was in college, she was, uh, had a summer job working in a laundromat and my dad was uh, in town doing, uh, I think he might've been picking apples. Uh, this was a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And he would go into the laundromat and there was this uh, worker there who, in my dad's words, had a really good ass. <laughs> and so he, <laughs> he would bring in a, one piece of clothing every day. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and he got the girl. <laughs> but so in like this book, I'm not writing that situation, but my heroine, she has a bakery. And he ah. comes in every day to pick up a apple turnover. Oh, that's after awesome. the first time he goes in there, because he's enchanted with her. And so, yeah, oh, but so it, like I knew that I had that beginning, but then I was like, well, how do, like, what's the adhesion? And then like you know, how do you know? Then what are their backstories? Because like I knew that I had that set piece of the beginning, but sometimes I have the set piece of, um, the grand gesture or like a, mm -hmm. a big dramatic moment. So then yeah so any anyway, like I'm writing a book a month but like I do the production of the book of the actual writing and editing in about a week but it takes me mm -hmm. those two or three other weeks to get it all sorted in my head because for me I have to know all the details like it's almost enough details for me to take the idea and write a full novel but then like I condense it down into about 15,000 words mm -hmm. I still wow. like mm -hmm. even if I even if something is only mentioned for a sentence as part of like a backstory item or like part of the backstory for the character, like I know more in my head. Mm. And yeah, I right. get a little bit plotty in my head. Yeah. So I'm picking <laughs> that intellection is high on your strengths in Luna. I would think so. The When I did my strengths, it was, uh, I'm going to say about 20 years ago when they mm -hmm. only gave you five. Yep. Oh. Um, and intellection was not part of them. It was like competition, achiever, mm. uh, wow. communication. And it, it was like five. I had been a freelance technical writer. Mm -hmm. or I was a freelance technical writer for about almost 15 years. And when you looked at mine, you're like, oh, you're a freelance writer. <laughs> 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 I mean, because it was, yeah, yeah it was. right. Yeah. But yeah, I think if I took it now and I was able to get pen, I intellection might well yeah. be up there because it's yeah. like I really do what? work through everything. Mm. Um, and I but I think that's part... also part of what you need to do if you're writing short because you have such limited space. And that, I mean, unless you're just writing a short that is primarily 60 times, for me, I have a lot of story in in my books as well that you have to learn how to have one or two sentences that have the information where the reader can read them and then fill in the backstory so that you don't have to. Yeah. And okay. I think that's part of like why I think through things so much is so like, okay, what is the backstory? And then how can I say that in one or two sentences so that the reader gets that depth? That's a skill. That's that hard. really is. Yeah, one or two yeah, sentences. I, yeah. It's like yeah. writing poetry. Because like, you know, when you're writing poetry and I took poetry workshops in college, like you have to find the right word or the right phrase because you don't have a space for fluff. Or if you're mm -hmm. writing metered poetry, it's like you have to be very precise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I sometimes think that writing short romance or just short stories in general is it's like, 
there's a lot of the same elements where you have to be very strategic about what you say and how you say it if you want to have that depth of a story mm-hmm. or you want if you want that depth to your story because like I said you know if you're just writing sex you know a story that's mostly sexy times which is completely fine and I've you know written those kinds of stories not for Lana you know it's yeah it depends uh, what you're looking for at the end of it right yeah like, and I'm sorry I'm trying I'm, I'm trying I'm not trying to say that depth is better I, I feel like I'm putting my foot in my mouth but no no not at you're all just saying, I that's think what you're aiming for about your approach yeah, yeah. yeah. It's interesting because I think people also think that maybe shorts are easier because they're shorter. And yeah. I have to say it's not. Oh. It's it's I've I've tried like I've written <laughs> novellas versus a full length novel, and I've there's just as much work that went into writing a thirty thousand word novella as an eighty to hundred thousand word novel because you've still got to think up the ideas, you've still got to create that world, you've still got mm. to do all that stuff. Um, as well yeah. as what you're talking about, which is mm-hmm. using fewer words to say the same thing that you ha- can say in a longer novel. Um, right. And there... I have, I did actually write a couple of novels. That's sort of like my path was I started writing erotica and then I got tired of writing the sexy scenes. And then I saw someone say, oh, sweet romance is really great. And so I wrote a couple <laughs> of sweet romance novels mm-hmm. and unfortunately they both bombed. Okay. <laughs> So, mm. but, I mean, and they were 60 to 70,000 words each. And I mean, I still like them. Um, I understand where they fell short as romance novels. Mm. Um, but then like eventually when I went started writing short romance, it was so different because I was like, I don't have time to, you know, have three chapters or four chapters to introduce the characters. I have to do it in like, mm one chapter maybe two chapters and there has to be the meat cute in there um and so yeah it's it was definitely an adjustment to because I started with writing 10,000 word stories and to like write a full story in 10,000 words was um it took some adjustment Mm -hmm. discipline I would imagine Mm -hmm. it's just different I think just so different so do you feel like you've hit on your sweet spot of word count now but that sort of 15 to 17 that I'm gradually increasing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do. I really like 15,000 words because I can get a side character in for each of the main characters and I can get a little bit more meat to the story, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I really do like the 15 to 17,000 words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So on the Amazon store, it's got. Um, well, on the US store I'm not sure if it's actually in other countries so I think it's probably just the dot com store where it's got um, the short reads categories or the short romance um, like by timing so it's uh, is it 60 minutes 90 minutes and then two hours I think it's... yeah it's 45 60 90 ah, and then two hours okay uh, so are you writing your word count for a specific to get into one of the specific categories here um, I generally aim for 90 minutes, but mm-hmm. my length sort of sometimes puts puts me up into the two hours because yeah. it's, um, I think, 64 pages is the cutoff for 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes like I hit 66 pages or 67 pages mm-hmm. and then I get up to two hours. Right. Yeah. And you don't find that makes a difference like that people are not kind of specifically, I don't know how it works, I, but do they specifically go to 90 90- minutes and you miss out on <laughs> some of the people when you or you're not that worried I'm not now I'm not that worried but when I first started I chose one hour short reads for yeah. very specific reason because I was I wanted to get back into writing romance um, and I didn't feel confident with writing novels and when I was researching short romance I was like one hour had the most to me doable range of sales ranks between number one and number 100 that I felt that I could rank in that top 100. Um, And then like 90 minutes was a little bit more competitive and two hours was about as competitive as it is now. It has a much narrower rank spread. Mm -hmm. And so when I started, I was like, okay, I'm going to do one hour because I feel confident that I can do that. And I was able to rank my books in there. I was able to hit number one, um often not always but I was able to hit number one even if it was just for like a few hours you know Mm -hmm. I would Mm -hmm. I would get there 
Mm. And now that I'm like more confident, I have a bigger mailing list and I have a bigger catalog that like, let's write a little bit longer. You get better page reads. Um, and then sometimes mm. I will write in two hour, but that's mm. still competitive. Mm. So you're in KU then, Lena? Yes. Yeah, mm. I did have some of my books, some of my backlist wide for a while, but... Mm. I have only played around with Facebook ads a couple of times. So that's not something I mastered. So I wasn't driving any readers there. And like, I would have some organic read through and I had a couple of book bubs on collection and that would drive some sales wide, but I didn't nurture it. So mm. I pulled everything and put it back in KU mm. um, because right. then it's the marketing is a little bit easier. Cause like, you know, schedule your free days or, um, mm -hmm like group promotions like on like i'm sure you're familiar with like zoe bub the stuff yeah. your kindle days yes. like you know yes. i can take something and you know put it up there and it's a little bit easier to promote um because i like wide but like i said i wasn't nurturing it and because i wasn't feeding new books wide mm -hmm. i think it was a little bit of a harder sell for me yeah mm -hmm. yeah fair enough so are there like I'm I'm intrigued by like the, the, what you're talking about like having to write two sentences to read a whole bunch more. Are there any other kind of tips or or things that you think are specific to uh, short romance that people need to kind of think about when they're writing it? Like, oh, particular... I think it's in most short romance you don't have a lot of space other than for your two main characters, like you. Mm -hmm. Um, like a lot of times like even with the 15,000 word romance the side characters don't get their own story they're the ones saying hey you should take a chance on this guy or you should take a chance on this woman um, or they can be like the sounding boards of like I really like him but my last boyfriend hurt me and then she's like no take the chance of seeing the way he looks at you and yeah it's you I think it goes back to you have to find the most important parts of the story and write those mm -hmm. and without too much fluff because it's, yeah. you know, you don't have, like in a novel, you, uh, I'm not sure how to, the best way to say it, like you, you have just more space for more words. I mean, yeah. like you still want all of your words to be doing work and carrying mm -hmm. the story along, but um, you just have to choose sorry I'm not saying this right you you just have to choose fewer pieces for a short you know for a short yeah. romance mm -hmm. yeah because it's, it's like you know it's along fast rather than a slow yeah build. instead of like yeah. having 15 scenes like you might say okay like I have room for seven scenes so which are the most important or mm -hmm. which are the most um affecting scenes to have yeah mm -hmm. you know, and it's like you because it's like you you get to like the romance parts of it like you get to the first kiss faster or you get to the wow look at him you know mm -hmm. or wow look at her a lot mm -hmm. faster and mm -hmm. that becomes more of I mean that's the instant part of it yeah. like at the beginning mm -hmm. I think my first when I relaunched Lana my first book was um a brother's best friend because I was like okay they already know each other mm. so that yeah. you know like yeah. they have the you know and there was also like the element of like well in high school her brother said you can't look at my sister you know mm -hmm. um yeah and so like there was that it was a little bit easier to write that or it's yeah. like it was easier to write a second chance because like you know like these people know each other but like now I'm like okay I can write two people that come together and I guess another thing that I've learned is like their wounds for why they're single or why they think that they can't have a relationship need to be complementary mm -hmm. so that you, um, if you have say a woman who was told that she could never be successful doing what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then like a man who's like uh, maybe had something similar told to him. And then like, they can like both say, Oh, I'm going to help lift you up. And then, like, mm. they can both, mm. their, their, their wounds kind of match. So then they're like, oh, okay. Or, like, mm. they find what they want. And the other person, like, you know, maybe, like, the woman is, like, oh, had someone say, oh, you'll never be able to do what you want. And, like, mm. the man is the type who is always lifting people up. Mm. You bring them together and then 
yeah, he helps just, her to get yeah. what she wants. Yeah. yeah. Are you using those um, secondary characters um, in series? Like, do they get their own books? Some of them do, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. um, because like if, sometimes like I'll have a, a best friend who will get a book mm -hmm. or um, I did a series of boxers and uh, one woman's sister got the next book. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And like, I always knew that I wanted to write her book because mm -hmm. she had a set piece that I really wanted to write. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that you have these set pieces in your mind in advance. Mm -hmm. Like that's a very yeah. specific thing like I've, not everyone sees that it's do you mm. visualize them yes well so for like the one with the sister I mean so these were boxers and I knew that that book was called knockout and I mm. knew and it was set up that the sister had an abuse and had an abusive boyfriend mm. and I wanted her book to be her like leaving him behind and then she goes to take self defense self defense classes mm -hmm. at the gym because like her sister's like hey you know my new boyfriend he's a boxer they can help you out mm -hmm. and the said piece was going to be her and her the guy who was teaching her how to box um who they started a romance they go to the county fair her ex shows up and then she knocks him out nice nice Love it. Perfect. Love, Love it. it. <laughs> Proponent of violence. And, and in front of his friends and in, front of, in, in public. And um, some people made a video with their phone and then it goes viral. And yeah, so that, mm -hmm. that punch was the set piece because Love she was us. like standing up to him and just mm -hmm. yeah, That's cool. taking yeah. what she learned. Yeah. So are there different tropes that like you you got these awesome you got clearly got a very good grasp on tropes is what I'm trying to say if I can actually say the oh, words. So are there particular tropes that you generally like to use are you using them kind of because of a tactical thing like you know that they're more popular or are you just picking the ones that you like like how does that work? So I will choose a niche to be um I should say tactical um because like when I was preparing to write my last series and I write in a world that I created which is called Heartland Heroes um and so far there are two towns and then there's King Mountain and before I did the third series which was on King Mountain and they're all mountain men I was like okay I would actually been planning to write a security ser um security company series which I had breadcrumbed in the second series but then I looked at the top 100 and I'm like, mountain men are having another moment. I have mentioned this mountain before and we've kind of met one of the guys who lives up there. And so I was like, I'm going to write mountain men. And so then I did that. But as for like the tropes, like I really love writing second chance romance, but I can only really do that like once per series. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I like writing friends to lovers, but that's... Uh, yeah, but a lot of times I just sort of have just two people come together. I think there's there can be some opposites to the trap act that that I also like writing. But yeah, it's I actually have uh, where is it? I actually bought these up. So a while ago, and I don't use these all the time, but I made these lists um, when I started writing Insta Love, where I was like different tropes like tropes that I will write like um, like I don't write dark romance so that's not going to be on my list um, and then themes I have a list called him which is sort of like is it military fireman policeman blue collar professor bad boy and then things for her and then like maybe some subplots or obstacles and then I made a mix and match list so I can't oh, say nice that yeah nice. so okay. it's like for me like I don't, don't like I don't experience writer's block because I just I have a lot of ideas but even if like I'm thinking okay let's do a new series and I think okay what do I want to do and if I get stuck I'll look at this list and say okay because you think oh I want to choose second chance military maybe throw in bad boy and she's his brother's best friend and then maybe she has um a bad ex you put those all together and you're like okay that you can kind of mm. once you figure out the setting the story just sort of comes together yeah, yeah um, that's cool love that mm -hmm. so so yeah, the common so theme in all of them is usually 
curvy woman and kind of protective guy like those kind of would you say that yes because and so um one of the things that chart asked about was like the planning and like how leveling up and how i figure that out and so after i relaunched lana for a couple of years like i launched it up and then it was steady but it wasn't really growing and so i was like okay I need to figure out how to improve this or I need to start another pen name. And I didn't want to start another pen name. So I said, okay, how can I figure out where to put my focus? So what I did is I created a list of my 10 best reviewed books, my 10 highest reviewed books, and then my best selling books. And I broke those down into the five best selling standalones and the five best selling collab books. And then I started looking at those and saying, okay, what are my tropes? What are, and then you, you start seeing themes and then I found out that what my readers liked the most was military bad boy blue collar mm -hmm. protector mm -hmm. and so then I put all of those in small town and then that's where Heartland Heroes came out it's like it's all small town most of them are ex-military um, sometimes there's like a bad boy element but they're all blue collar workers or like mountain men mm -hmm. um, and they're all protective yeah that's cool Lovely. i think that's really smart the way you did that yeah. right? looking at the stuff and, you got out there and it's it it, and then it took um because i only write you know about one book a month um and i do some only. collabs occasionally well it's one novella a month um yeah. and it took a while but it took about a year and a half for it to like really start to stick and even at the beginning of this year, I was just like, I'm not sure if this strategy that I came up with is really working, but I was like, I'm stubborn. So I'm like, well, I'm going to, you know, we'll go through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then about four months ago, my income doubled. I just had one book that got sticky. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it was, yeah, it was one of the, it was book three in the, the Mountain Men series that I just finished. And then it lifted everything up. And then the next book came out. And it lifted everything up. Mm. And then I added two books to the series. So it was six and out of four. And yeah, and th yeah, things have just stayed. And like each month is approved since then. I was like, okay, we, we. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like we're at the sweet spot. <laughs> you're yeah, and it's like, that, like, you're not, you didn't do more advertising or anything like that. You're, no, you're I do very to little that. advertising, actually. Actually, I want to um, start getting back into Facebook ads because I, I tried it a little bit and then it seemed like it worked and then it kind of faded. And then I was like, then I was just like, okay, I'm going to deal with something. I'll deal with that later. But now yeah. I'm like, okay, these books are taking off. And like, I, you know, get good reviews. And um, I've kind of been strangely stubborn about wanting my books to be successful without a lot of advertising, mm -hmm. which I know is kind of shooting myself in the foot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now that I'm like, okay, people really, when they get into my world, they tend to stay there and read through the books. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm that's like, okay. Now, mm. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like, okay, now that I know that I have those readers, it's given me a little more confidence. Say, okay, now we'll start working mm. on Facebook ads and doing more advertising so that I can bring more readers in. Mm. And I think um, it takes the pressure off having to launch so frequently because you don't have to rely on it if, if the rest of your books are doing their work as well. Yeah, I think it can. Um, yeah, and I, and I like iterating through a lot of ideas quicker. Mm -hmm. So because it's like, like when I f was first, when I first launched Lana, I wrote some billionaire romance, I wrote some celebrities, um, I wrote a royal book, um, and then when I relaunched Lana, it was a little bit more of like the blue collar, kind of like mm -hmm. ex military. I think I mm -hmm. even wrote a medical romance, like a doctor in there, and I was able to try a lot of things quickly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I got to the point that I was like, okay, what are the books that perform the best that I like writing and that readers like? And then that's mm -hmm. what I focused on because there was some, luckily there was some nice overlap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, and I, I have an intrigue. I have a question because you, you don't do a lot of advertising, but I was looking at, for example, your blurbs and they're not, not the usual kind of blurb, like, and, and, but it, mm -hmm. I have to say it worked on me. I think I one clicked based on your blurb so I, was that on, like can I explain my impression of them and then you tell me okay. whether that was on purpose or whether that's because I don't even okay. know if that's a thing in short romance like maybe that I'm just 
because I don't read a lot of short romance, but you blurb I mean it was intriguing it included all the tropes but you basically told most of the story I thought I'd, maybe I got that wrong and but instead of kind of me going oh well I don't need to read it now because I've read the story I'm like oh I love that sound of that story I'm going to read it it was kind of whereas normally we kind of say oh we've got to be intriguing mm. and don't mm. tell all the plot points or just less is more yeah but, but I found that actually knowing as much as I did I was kind of it made me more interested not less is that on purpose mm. Um, well, first, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think w- with telling a lot of the story in the blur, like I want like the re- the reader to know what they're getting, and like I try to like have like a tease with like, but when I learn this, or when she learns this, will she still like me, or you know, will I, or when she learns this, you know, mm-hmm. will I still be able to win her over? So I sort of like to have that tease without knowing what that is, but the whole part with like having all the tropes in my tagline that was very strategic it was i didn't do that when i relaunched lana i didn't do that at the beginning but a friend of mine who writes dark romance was doing some kind of um course or reading something and he was and it was about i think thrillers and it basically had the a plus b plus c equals d Mm. tagline idea and i was Mm. like oh i haven't seen that and then I was like, well, but when I relaunched Lena, one of my most important things for doing so was I wanted a reader to know exactly what they were going to get by glancing at the title, the cover, and hopefully also the tagline. Mm-hmm. So like the cover would have Manchester, so you know what you're going to get. And that first book when I relaunched was Protecting Her Curves, a BBW and military romance. So you're like, Mm -hmm. and it was second chance and brother's best friend, but I think that was down in the blurb. So like, you know, like, okay, protecting, he's going to be alpha. BBW, she's curvy, military, he's ex-military. And then you read the blurb and you're like, oh, it's like his best friend uh, or best friend sister. But then when I started doing the A plus B plus C equals D, I'm like, all the tropes are going to be there. So like you glance at it, you know exactly what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Um, because you only have like seconds to get someone's attention Mm -hmm. and Um, and i've also found that sorry and i've also found that for me personally that doing less obvious titles doesn't work for me like i know there are short romance authors who have made them work you know like reaching for the stars that kind of title doesn't work for me protecting her curves works for me or um, rugged loner works for me where you have like rugged is signals mountain men and then loner is a characteristic of the man mm. those mm-hmm. those kinds of titles work for me yeah. what were you starting to say i was going to say it's interesting because we sometimes as authors try feel like we don't want to give too much away or don't want mm-hmm. to say too much so that people are surprised when they read the book but actually i think when you're a reader and you're looking over the millions of titles on Amazon or wherever, mm-hmm. you're kind of telling us that mm-hmm. this is exactly what this is going to be. And we know as readers, well, that's exactly what I want to hear or read about. That's actually just connecting the right reader with the right story. And that's awesome, you know? So, I, I yeah, I think it's great. Um, Thanks. And I like that what you're saying about like the rugged loner thing makes a lot of sense to me because I think I was in the we've talked about this before on the podcast, but, you know, the idea of oh it could be anything you like and you can brand it and make it your own. But actually, the title needs to do some work. And immediately, Mm -hmm. as you say, you know, it's rugged mountain man, loner, often is out by himself and it's going to be the one woman who can, you know, Um, bring him out of a shower yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you kind of know immediately and I think that's what we want so I yeah those are it's very smart and I think mm-hmm. someone who's Thank doing you. reach for their stars or things like that it's just making it a bit harder for themselves in a lot of ways Yeah, like I said it's I know authors who've made that kind of title work and so when I started the Heartland Heroes world I started with the boxers and I'm like first book heavyweight then prize mm-hmm. fighter and knockout and champ and I love those books, but they, they've they never gotten momentum. Like, even if I try and do promos on them now, it doesn't work. But then when I did, like, the second, which was ex-military mechanics working in the auto garage, um, they were rebel, and it was, like, a rebel's honor, a rebel's protection, rebel boss. 
and then I continued like the same kind of thing with the mountain men series where it was like you know rugged protector rugged savior rugged loner yeah rugged guardian and I think there was another one um but when you look at the series page you have like the rebel which is um evocative and then you have rugged which is evocative and then like the descriptor that's in bold at the bottom of them are for me those are what i choose desirable traits for a man like you Mm -hmm. want a man that's going to be a protector that's going to be your savior you know and loner isn't you can debate whether or not that's desirable but like you know women you you want to be the one who wins him over Mm -hmm. yeah and so then like i'm sorry (laughs) women love the idea of being the one who you know yeah um and so so then for me that's very strategic because i'm like i want it the titles to do so much work where you're like okay um rugged guardian you know yeah he's a mountain man he's a guardian you know and that does a lot of telegraphing what the book is and it's you know it tells the reader what to expect Mm. yeah that's very smart and your covers themselves not just the title but the covers themselves are all very uh, well designed and they all look the same and you can tell that they're in a series you know there's there's a lot of um, heavy lifting being done by those covers in terms of the the marketing yeah. of your books are you are you doing those covers or do you get someone else to do them oh no uh, no I I can't do that <laughs> no I have a cover designer that I work yeah. with and she's um worked with me through all of the Harlan books yeah. and then like some collabs that, that I've been in as well that's awesome yeah no they're yeah. very very cool so I think when you say you don't do advertising I think you've set everything up so nicely mm. with the beautiful covers and everything nicely and the titles really work and all those kinds of things working together and the tropes even themselves like popular tropes that people are definitely reading I think those things all work together to kind of help the brand um can I just ask this is I'm kind of mixing it up in the middle of everything, but oh, nice. why, why, why do you think readers like shorts? Like, what is it? Like, who are the readers that are coming to shorts? What are they? Yeah, what are they? A lot of people want the dopamine hit very quick. Like, there are people who they're like, I have a really busy schedule. I want to read a story over my lunch, and like, I want to have like, I want to get to the HEA by the time I'm finished with lunch. Mm. Um, there are a lot of mothers who are like. I have time to read a book while Joey's at soccer practice, you know, and I'm sitting in my car, you read a book or the kids are down for a nap, you read a book or it, yeah, I think it's a lot of people, they just, they don't have a lot of time or they don't want to spend a lot of time. I mean, there are people that are like, you know, I want the 300,000 word book, um, mm. but then there are people that are just like, yeah, I want to have lunch and read a story that just takes me away. Mm. And I want to finish the story while I'm having lunch. Mm. I can see, or, you know, I wanna... see that appeal of like um, wanting to just get to that. Like for me, when I'm reading romance, I want the dopamine hit of them falling in love, right? So the idea right. that you can have it in this condensed form and whilst Joey's doing soccer practice and you get that full story is, is actually quite um, tantalizing. Yeah. 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 Now yeah. yeah. no, that's awesome. And um, so I've been to your website as well and I noticed that it's very much <laughs> it's very much aimed at sign up for my newsletter or buy my books is that again on purpose is that where you I got to a point when I was doing the USA Today uh list run with some other authors that I needed to have a website so it's my website is um much more utilitarian than pretty um and it was just like you know here you can sign up for my newsletter here are some of my books and it um I'm embarrassed to say it has not been updated in a while, so it doesn't have my most recent books on there. But yes, yeah, it's, um, I need to do more with my website. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I actually thought it worked. Like I wasn't wasn't criticizing. I was actually like, this is intriguing because Mm -hmm. literally I can sign up for your newsletter, which gets you in direct contact Mm -hmm. or go buy my books, which is again what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I I wasn't, Mm -hmm. I was curious about it. Um, So, and I noticed you have epilogues, a lot of epilogues and every single one of them you, you, so I clicked on one to see what happens. And yeah, so you go to Book Funnel and you're signing up for your newsletter through all of the epilogues. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. So at one point I tried the sign up for my newsletter um, link in the back of a book with or without a free story to give the reader and even with the even with the free story 
I didn't always have a lot of readers clicking through to get the free story, even though, you know, I would get great reviews on the book. So I was like, okay. And then I knew that in with um, romance novels, there were, there were a lot of authors who were like, you know, sign up for the free epilogue. And then I found that I would get a lot more signups that way. And also that those subscribers tended to be the best subscribers because they were invested in the story. Mm -hmm. yeah or they would and they were invested in the series like if I um when I would do like newsletter building um promotions where it was like oh um oh what's a book what was like organized yeah like yeah Yeah. something like that that there are a lot of freebie hunters they they want the Mm -hmm. free book yeah they'll unsubscribe like I remember I once got a nasty gram from MailChimp because I did a book funnel freebie promotion and I imported those and I mean it was like a free um, newsletter swap Mm -hmm. thing Mm -hmm. and I imported those and then I had more than seven percent of the people unsubscribe Mm -hmm. right away and then I got a nasty gram from book funnel and I was like well that was the last one of those Mm -hmm. Um, yeah because I I don't want to lose my you know uh, provider and um but yeah, so it's like I have a smaller list than some people, but I also call it out so that like if you don't open anything for a while, I send you a nice email saying, hey, you know, maybe your service doesn't show me that you're opening. So here are other ways to follow me on like, you know, BookBub, Amazon, Goodreads, and you can yeah. still get updates. That's a good way to do or, it. Yeah. Or I'm if like you it. just respond to me, then I'll like, I'll keep you on the list. And some people are like, oh my God, I, I read all your emails. And I'm like, okay, you stay on the list. Um, mm. And then I do get people when I send those out who will follow me on um, BookBub or Goodreads and presumably Amazon, Amazon doesn't tell you, um, but like BookBub, Mm -hmm. like BookBub will say, oh, you've got two new, you know, 10 new followers this week. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I try to keep my mailing list to be like the people who like my books the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a really good click through rate because of that? Like, because you're being so. Do you like, I get up to. 40 to 45 percent often wow. of wow. people that are or the people that open and then like the click through late like, click through is generally at least 10 percent mm. and how often but are you sending them that out? gets re- i generally do at least a couple times a month it depends on mm-hmm. how much i have going on like so actually this month i'm not actually releasing something new because i'm kind of taking a breather from the last um series i'm working on this collab book and then i'm I'm still nailing down some of the details for the upcoming series mm-hmm. and I don't have covers yet. So that's kind of, okay. <laughs> that's kind of slowed things down a little bit. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. My allergies have been kicking up. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but generally it's usually at least a couple times a month um, when I have like promotions, like if I'm doing something like stuff your Kindle or another similar promotion or when I'm pushing a pre-order, sometimes it's, three or four times a month it's usually like twice two or three times a month um Mm -hmm. it's a little quieter this month because no release this month um except for like doing promotions okay Mm -hmm. that's intriguing so you haven't got like a set day or anything you just when you need to oh i I do i send out on fridays when i send out i mean like Mm -hmm. i usually launch on a tuesday and then like i'll send like on a launch day on a tuesday and then follow up on fridays but regular newsletters are on fridays and like i said unless it's like a stuff your kindle thing and if that's like on a thursday then I will send out on Thursday instead of Friday. Okay. No, that's cool. You do um, book funnel promotions? I use, I sometimes sell, sign up for the sales promotions where you send out your newsletters newsletters, and you're directing people to your Amazon page. Yeah. Um, I don't do the um, book funnel promotions where you're promoting your newsletter freebie because mm. that's where I get the most... <laughs> non-open subscribers and the people yeah. who unsubscribe in mass and i'm like mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah that gets dangerous territory yeah. um, because for me it's just those promotions on book funnel used to be more productive for me but like as time has gone on um to me i've generally found that there are a lot more freebie hunters than people who mm. really want to discover new authors to subscribe to and then pay for the mm. books mm. yeah that's fair. Um, mm-hmm. So you keep mentioning collab books. Is that you collaborating on a book with other authors or what's that? 
no it's um so like this book that i have that i'm working on right now um tempting the mountain man is there are it's set in sweetheart falls and there are several other authors in the series and we're all writing a book set in sweetheart falls oh, um, and there, there's just, there's not really any crossover mm-hmm. but um yeah it's sort of or you get like 25 authors you're like let's write a you know christmas collab where you know we're all just um promoting each other's books mm-hmm. as they come out so you sort of you get the mm-hmm. um, the rising tide lifting everybody nice yeah. And Can is I it just say the the name of Sweetheart Falls? Mm. Ten out of ten to who even thought of that? Yes, one? That, that is a very good um, yeah. title, and I, I do plan on having a nice scene at the waterfall. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, is there someone in particular that's running that, or is it just you're in a group and these people decide? Yes, or... yeah. There, there's always someone who's a lead on one of these, and I um, ran a couple of collabs a while ago, much like four or five authors um yeah and it's great it's just like someone says hey I want to write a series of books like one of the clubs um the small clubs and it's like let's write uh, Valentine's Day stories mm-hmm. and so you know we just we did that um there are, I've been in collaborations where you try to work in some crossovers with other books and it, it tends to be a bit more intensive to do that because you have to find like oh who's got the killer character that's going to work best with a story that I'm writing and just mm. then work those out yeah, but most hard. of the collabs they're just we're 10 of us and we're going to write mountain man stories you know set here or mm-hmm. like I was in um a series where we wrote hitman stories and there were mm. like 25 of us wow is it and, all one series like it's all put up as one series on Amazon for example yes. yeah yes yeah and then eventually like with the hitman series I think there were 25 of us and some of the authors have, I mean, that was about three years ago. Some of the authors have pulled their books from the series and put them into their own series. Mm-hmm. Um, so how does it, just out of curiosity, how does that work when you're loading to Amazon? You load it individually and then you can just link it somewhere inside Yes, there, it's or? usually like the pers- the collab- um, the leader of the collaboration, you know, once everybody's books are up for pre-order, they contact Amazon and say, okay, we are doing, you know, create a series mm-hmm. page for you know these asins okay and goes oh on. that's cool did not know that that yeah. was something that could be it's done so you learn something mm. every day that's oh, awesome so, so a lot of what you've been doing i i i think you've got you talked about being stubborn and determined and things like that as part of this but i i feel like there's been some leveling up in terms of your mindset and how you think about it can you talk about that for us like what have you done to do oh gosh um and I've thought about it. I think this is the toughest thing for me to put into words, but I think it's it comes down to believing in what you're doing. It's mm. like like even like the times when I was questioning like is Lana viable? And because I was thinking, you know, I'm hmm, my income has been stable, but it hasn't gone up in the ways that I've wanted it to or that I've seen other of my peers do. And, but then I was like, no, like I look at my reviews or, you know, sometimes when I talk to readers, they're like, oh my God, I love your books. I'm like, okay, so I know I'm writing the right book. So then it's like, if I'm writing the right book, then what do I have to do to level up? And then for me, that came down to, you know, making the list of the 10 best reviewed books, the 10 highest rated books, and then my best selling books, finding the commonalities in those and saying, okay, that's what I'm going to focus on. And that's how I leveled up because once I started Heartland Heroes, when I got to that book, which I think was the 11th book in the Heartland Heroes World series, that's the book that took off. When I was implementing everything that I was using to level up, saying like, this is what my readers want from me, or like, this is what they like the most. That's what I gave them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, and I, I continue to have faith in my writing. It's like, you know, I'm confident that I can write a good story. It's like, okay, how do I take that good story and move up? And it's like, okay, I have to have a, a better strategy, which is a narrower focus. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And that's um, often the case, right? Like mm-hmm. people, we always say niche down, like be specific because trying to be generic never gets you anywhere. You don't appeal to anyone. And somehow being specific and focusing down 
gets you mm. more success rather than less. It's kind of like the opposite mm. almost of what you would you would think. Yeah, and and it's basically like I want my readers to know what to expect from me. And like right now, yeah, they are expecting small town romance, probably a military hero, a curvy heroine, and then the rest I don't know it's maybe like the icing on the cake which is like mm. you know is it a second chance romance is it age gap you know yeah. uh, is it friends to lovers you know that kind of thing mm-hmm. mm, that's yeah. cool I love that um and I, I want to talk because you said it was a year and a half maybe from when you started you know you said okay I'm going to change this I'm going to be specific I did the research until it kind of kicked off and you had this 11th book third book in the which particular series I can't remember um the, the last one yeah the last one and that did you just have to how do you stick with it it's kind of like there'd be people who would have gone out six months I'm done that's I'm out yeah I'm just I'm stubborn <laughs> 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 um but it's also I have sort of the um I had someone tell me that I had stick with itness. Mm. And it, part of it's being stubborn and it was, you know, there's a point where like, you know, you, you know, you get covers and you're like, I've got four covers that I've paid for. I'm right in the mm-hmm. books, you know, mm-hmm. cause like, I'm um, like, I know some people are cover collectors. They're like, Oh, I want that. I'm like, no, if I, if I buy it, I want to use it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, but I think I it think was just being the stubborn. Belief comes into it, doesn't it? it? That your belief comes into it. That kind of like helps that stubbornness because if you have the belief then there's a reason to push through it, isn't there? Yeah, I, it definitely helps. But like I said, I I definitely wavered, especially at the beginning of this year. I was just mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm not where I, you know, wanted to be. But then I was like, let's, you know, do the next series. And doing the next series is the one that took off. Mm-hmm. Love that. So, and it's, mm-hmm. but it's also, I realized that a lot of authors I know who took off much quicker than I did were writing much faster than I was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, having to take 11 books to take off, yeah, maybe for somebody else, that would take four months to write 11 books, but mm-hmm. I don't write that fast. Mm-hmm. So like when I think back, I'm like, okay, it, it took 11 books to have the one that just magically stuck at 2000 rank, mm-hmm. lifted up all the other books. And now all the other books are doing better, which there's probably some Amazon algo magic in there. Mm-hmm because mm-hmm. they're saying people readers like these books so yeah it just it took me about 11 books for it to take off and maybe someone else writes those 11 books in four months or even five months mm-hmm. yeah and changes. i think you know if you think about it like well you know if you're writing insta love novellas and it takes you five months to get that or 11 books to get there that's not very long mm-hmm. unless you're one book a month like i am <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you think from when you first started into this uh, restarted the Lana Love um Lana Love um back in it was 2019 that you restarted do you think you have a right. different mindset now from back then or is it just just the I stubbornness? think my mindset is more focused and I have more confidence because then it was like I had done some Lana books and then I went back to erotica for a while and then I was like, no, I'm like, I can't keep doing erotica and I want to make more money. So I, I was like, okay, let's go back to Lena, but let's do research, which is when I started doing the research. But even then I was like, you know, throwing spaghetti at the wall. I'm like, you know, what's going to stick? You know, is it going to be mm-hmm. um, mountain men? Is it going to be ex-military? Is it going to be the doctor romance I wrote or um, something that's a little bit sweeter friends to romance that doesn't have like mountain men or bad boy in it. And so I, and because I was writing short, I was able to iterate through a lot of things to figure out what was starting to stick or what I felt I wrote better. And then after a while, it's like, I guess, you know, started to learn what it was. And then when I, you know, made the list of what were the best and top rated books, I was like, okay, these are the things that I actually like writing. And so then I narrowed my focus to those. And it was like having mm-hmm. the mindset was like being able to tell myself, like, this is what I do well. So we're going to do more of this. Even if you think I've got an idea for for a billionaire romance that I think would be fun, you're like, nope, Lana, you're not doing that. <laughs> you're, you're doing your small town blue yeah. collar romance. Yep. Yeah. yeah, 
Mm. That's oh. interesting. And it's it's mm. exactly what um the strength stay, like Becca Sign, we had her at a conference recently, and it was all about stick to the things that you're good at, focus on the things that you're good at, use your strengths mm. to stop trying to stop trying to improve do all the other that perceive weaknesses it's like build on the strengths yeah build yeah. on the strengths yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. so that's exactly what you did you built on the things that you were was working for mm. you and that you're already good yeah. at and that you like doing also mm. so the the ones that you like writing i think sometimes yeah. we like writing them therefore we write them better i don't know that's a mm. thing maybe yeah that's and in my I mind. think it's when you're writing like the same flavor like you know small town blue collar ex-military it's like I find new traits to put in or like new um, new ways to refine things or refine ideas or like, you know, like refine, you know, what the experience is of <clears throat> what the experience is of that ex-military hero. Like, do they have PTSD? Like I've, <clears throat> sorry, uh, allergies. Yeah, have a drink. <clears throat> like with PTSD, I've had it where they have a the hero has a therapist and the therapist says you need to take care of somebody you need to take care of something that is not you but that relies on you go get a dog and he hires a you know hires a rescue or adopts a rescue dog who is a little hellion and then you know gets a dog trainer and then he falls for the dog trainer nice. or another mm. one in the mountain men series the guy has ptsd and the guy's like his therapist is like you need to learn how to relax or you're going to have to take pills for the rest of your life try mm -hmm. yoga and mm -hmm. he falls for the yoga instructor <laughs> nice and so it's like you like you you take those ideas of like the ptsd and like how do you handle it or like why do you you know like what happened to cause the ptsd um because like the guy who took yoga also has a lot of scars from an ied explosion so you're like okay sometimes like the ptsd is like more of a mental but for him he had like physical reminders of like what caused the ptsd and like how do you handle that and then like how can you make that complementary to the heroin because like you know i was talking earlier about like complementary like wounds are complementary you know adhesion like for that one he needed to um try something to reduce his stress so he tried yoga and then she's the yoga instructor so like they complement each other that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's part of the thing with like insta love is like you need to have that kind of complementary action going on because then it moves the story quicker. Mm. Yeah. There are yeah. definitely storylines or or things that you need to do in a in a short romance that's that's different to a longer romance. I it's kind of what I'm picking up from you. Is that do you think that's fair to say? I th I think it's fair or Maybe it's that you have to have a premise where, yeah, I, I think, yes, yeah, I think that, like, like, I read a lot of romance novels, and, like, I just um, finished one recently, and the time frame of that novel was about two and a half years. And because like there was um, the beginning and then it jumped ahead a few months and it jumped ahead. And like you, you couldn't do that kind of time jumping in an insta love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it made sense for the novel because it was showing how the relationship between these two characters built over time. And it was a very much an enemies to lovers kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They were thrown together. And yeah, so like something like that couldn't work in insta love. Like you would have to have them enemies to lovers adhesion and then you know like just one bad you know kind of yeah. a situation yeah. and then you're like whoa I thought I hated you but now you, I don't you, know, you smell nice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you keep me warm in this mountain cabin <laughs> exactly yeah. so it's like um so yeah I, th I think in some ways that some things that work for novels wouldn't work for insta love because yeah. it's like I said, you just, you just have to condense it down. So because it is insta love, um, how do you deal with the sex scenes? And like, do you have just the one main sex scene or do you have? For a while, I was just doing one sex scene in the final mm -hmm. chapter, sort of 
Um, mm. In my notes, it's always right. Victory sex. Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but now sometimes I'll put another one in a little bit earlier, but just like not quite as much detail or mm-hmm. like maybe they'll just like get some kissing and, you know, groping going on. And like, maybe mm-hmm. sometimes it's interrupted, like, you know, like the phone call or, you know, mm. somebody walks in, you know, yeah. like, oh, okay. oh, hey, you know, um, yeah. walks, you know, but yeah, no. So for me, it's usually just like the one mm. set piece sex scene at the end where it's like, you mm. know, cause then you, I mean, it's not just the sex, but then you've got like all the emotions are like, oh, I mm-hmm. never thought I would find mm. somebody like this or like they really understand me or they support me and I just you know feel myself falling deeper and deeper and then mm. like you know they're making love and mm. it just intensifies everything yeah mm-hmm. yeah I like that victory sex that's awesome because I, <laughs> I think sometimes you do have I think yeah. I got that from a friend of mine who said that they use that and I was just uh, like oh yeah that, final yeah, chapter no, yeah. I'm gonna take that one too, <laughs> yeah <laughs> with, with the epilogue are you doing like the day they get married or kids or anything like that or the epilogue a lot of times for me is sometimes you get the an extra sex scene in there for at least half of it Mm -hmm. but a lot of times I was writing an epilogue where it shows the woman achieving what she achieving her goal that was stated in the book Mm -hmm. um like I think it's my actual newsletter freebie where the woman is a journalist for a newspaper and she meets the hero because she's interviewing him and she talks to him about something and she's like wow that'd be a really great book and then so in the epilogue she's got the book deal and Mm -hmm. i'm sorry i think she had the book deal and i think she's just published the book Sorry, it's been a while since I wrote that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but the idea is there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. But it also shows. Mm. Yeah, it's like it shows like one or both of them achieving something together, and it sh- could be them, you know, being lovey dovey. And sometimes it is the honey, I'm pregnant, or honey, marry me, and let's make this official, and yeah. that kind of thing. And like, I like one, that. I haven't heard the achieving something angle mm. before and I like mm. really like that sorry keep going mm. I just wanted to yeah and I think that that also helps with like writing short that like you don't always have time to show somebody achieving that but you can do like that you know the happy ever after and just like yeah she's got the book deal or um she's got whatever it is that she you know wanted to achieve or mm. she's helped him achieve something that and like you show that they're working together and supporting each other and you know lovey-dovey and you know sometimes like you see like the end of the epilogue of you know they're getting home and they're starting to get intimate and then ends or sometimes I just I add the full scene yeah, yeah like mm-hmm. I think oh my my epilogue I'm going to do it in 1500 words and it's yeah. 1500 yeah. words so how much <laughs> do they end up being sorry did you say oh sometimes like, they're like 2500 words because I'm like oh I, you know it's you know I'm like it's oh you know like showing they're happy and then like okay I want to have this scene and then I'm like oh then let's add a sexy scene <laughs> yeah awesome. that's fantastic so we're actually I can't believe it we're actually almost in an hour here and, and it's oh wow need to yeah we've been just having a great time chatting um so <laughs> is there just just really quickly one last piece of advice for anyone who is thinking of maybe um getting into short romance just w- what would you say to them uh, well I I think that the best piece of advice is learn how to write a damn good book mm-hmm. because there there is a slightly different skill set for writing short but I think with anything like I've I've gone to RAM I've gone to other conferences or I've done like online courses and they talk about like here's how you level up like you know using TikTok or Facebook ads or all these other things and I've realized that there's always the assumption that you have a damn good book because mm-hmm you can market i mean you can have great facebook ads and you can bring in a lot of readers to um, read your book and make money that way but unless you have a damn good book they're not necessarily going to read your next book mm-hmm. and they're not necessarily going to read the next book in the series or if you're writing standalones mm-hmm. writing the next standalone that you write and so then you're constantly having to find new readers mm-hmm. but if you write a damn good book they're going to be like i want to read the next book by this author and then you do that and and it can take a while to figure out how to do that or if like you're new to writing short romance it can take a while to figure out your own process 
for writing a short romance and making sure that you get everything into the book that you want to get into the book. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it takes a lot of trial and error, but then like, once you get into it, it's like, you know, just write the best book that you can, you know, like hit yeah. the, tr you know, nail the tropes as much as you can, you know, write what readers want. Like if mountain men is having a moment and you like writing mountain men, write mountain men. Uh, or like, if you like writing monsters, monsters are still having a moment, you know, then write the monster romance. Yeah. Yeah, hundred mm -hmm. percent. That's such a good advice. Thank yeah. you very much for joining Thank us so here. Thank you today. all for having me. It's been a wonderful pleasure. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, if someone wants to find you, where's the best place to look online? Um, they can find me uh, on Facebook, mm -hmm. and it's um, I think it's Lana Love writes. Um, but like my Facebook group is Lana Love Books, so okay. that's easy check you out oh, there fantastic really. thank you very much and Shah, where can thank we be so found much. we can be found at spygirlspodcast.com we're on patreon at spygirlspodcast and on youtube at spygirlspodcast awesome thank you and thank you lala it's been fantastic we thank really you enjoyed so it. much thank you and thank you to all of our listeners for uh, or watches if you're on youtube <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> for listening to another episode of the spa girls podcast uh, we've had an excellent time with you all here today and we'll be back again next week with another episode be well. Be well. Bye. 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 Bye.